I actually just got this in the mail the other day. This is our booklet. This is the page in Inkblot for Panic Room, which um, is uh, just about in the middle of the album. It's the Enneagram 5, the thinker. The archetype is the hero. And the modern uh, mental health being discussed is uh, PTSD. The color that we have fixed with it on the color wheel is aquamarine. The way that song came about, both musically and lyrically, was pretty different than anything we've done before. And honestly, the, the moment we got out of the studio, we were like, uh, we felt like this would be a uh, just a cool song to lead with, um, which is why it is the song that we'll be premiering. That song actually originally was about two minutes and 30 seconds. And there's a long kind of build up, like bridge section in the middle of the song that both uh, kind of lyrically and musically happened when we were in New Jersey recording, where uh, Will uh, Putney um, kind of saw the opportunity to open that song up and um, Spencer and Mitch um, did what they did best and kind of added a lot of feeling to the song. Almost like put a different almost genre or feel into there. Lyrically speaking, that song originally was just uh, going to be about panic disorders, thus it's still called Panic Room. Uh, which was the original title. However, um, it took on an element of talking about PTSD. And the reason for that actually started last year in October. We were on tour in Nashville and a friend of mine named uh, Gerald, uh, Gerald Clark um, came up to me and told me that he was uh, still struggling from some of the things that he saw and experienced when he was uh, deployed in Afghanistan. We talked a little bit, but he actually emailed me when we were in the studio and kind of what he wrote me was so profound that I sort of shoved all the lyrics off the table that I kind of had and, and rewrote this to tell his story. The song opens with someone who's trying to go to sleep um, but is, is also afraid of uh, the night terrors that kind of uh, attack them. It deals with kind of the psyche of someone who's experienced a lot of cognitive dissonance and is now struggling to reintegrate to society. His story, which it gets to at the end of the song when he finally has a full flashback, to the war is the this time when he was holding a line. A young man came forward. He had a trigger stitched into his vest, and, and they thought he did because they were telling him to stop. But he kept advancing towards the um, towards the camp that um, Gerald was guarding. And so finally, um, he he took a shot at the guy's leg to hopefully you know maim him and stop him without killing him. But unfortunately, the man bled out, screaming for help. And so my friend Gerald was was standing there not wanting this man to die, but also not able to help him for fear that um, he would die. What kind of resulted is uh, this, this phenomenon that this is a man who he didn't, he didn't want to kill. He doesn't think taking life is noble. Obviously, he, he probably saved lives by shooting that person, but I don't think things are so black and white for some people who actually are on that side. And um, I'm not a veteran. I haven't experienced war. I deeply appreciate people who serve uh, with the hope of defending, not of hurting, but uh, the many people who serve in our armed forces. This kind of interesting, you know, phenomenon followed my friend Gerald back home when uh, he would try to go to bed and he would imagine that man or he would uh, see his family on Thanksgiving and wonder what uh, this man's family was doing without him if there was an empty spot at the dinner table for this man. In taking this man's life, this man kind of joined his life. It, it became a lyric. Um, he took a life that takes his. And there's this interchange that um, is kind of mystical and, and, and really dark, and something that I don't fully understand, that you could take a life and that life w would sort of become attached to you. And I, I think obviously that shows that you know, he hasn't hearted himself to a place where he, you know, feels good about the violence. And I think my friend Gerald is an example of someone who's very brave, who's will, who wants to process through this and doesn't want to embrace maybe like a macho persona that actually isn't true to who he is at all as like a loving, hardworking, intelligent um, person who so many people depend on in his community. He wants to be open about this and process this because he, he loves serving his country but he also doesn't want to lose his humanity. It is really that middle bridge of the song that we zoom out from the perspective of my friend with PTSD and we think about 
the imperialism of America as a whole. It was really thinking about his story at the same time seeing, you know, the Republican and Democratic uh, debates where a lot of politicians would pander to uh, military families and military people and say, we support you, you know, this person doesn't support the troops, you know, President Obama never cared about you, but we care about you, and would say these things, but, but would also just talk about, you know, military intervention like, like it's nothing. We will subject you to our violent whims. Someone like, <laughs> someone like Donald Trump would, you know, talk about, um, you know, would act so pro-military, but, but they would actually hide from a war and that they would use their money and their privilege as a way to not have to experience uh, violence. It's, it's really that mentality that, that made me realize that being pro-soldier and pro-veteran, -vet in my opinion, means uh, opposing war. I think if you see veterans as more than people that hold guns, but as human beings who are brothers and sisters and they are mothers and fathers and they're humans that are obviously brave enough to volunteer uh, that I, I would think that that they would be the same people who can who can be back in America and be serving and be making their community a better place and then we talk about you know subjecting those people to the whims of politicians who it's not a conspiracy you know make money gain political power from flexing muscle that they never have to deal with the repercussions of. And so it's really that middle bridge of the song that I, I say, uh, you know, the machines of air looking down on us, the beasts of dust as we grapple heel in hand, that, that soldiers are part of, especially in the modern day, this warfare that is almost being monitored by machines. A lot of Americans uh, have gotten used to this idea that we can police the world and that somehow, you know, um, the sons and daughters of America uh, would naturally be in the Middle East, you know, holding guns. The government uh, loves a soldier holding a gun, but doesn't seem to care that much about the massive amount of homeless people um, who were veterans. In the last year, homelessness in Los Angeles, I just saw yesterday, has gone up 11%. Guarantee you a lot of those people um, have served in, in, in foreign combat. I, I think it, it really says um, something about a, a nation state, how they treat those who no longer have anything to give them but once gave them everything. And that's uh, kind of what this song examines. And that, you know, post traumatic stress disorder is something that uh, is an epidemic and, it, and it's not being spoken about uh, for a lot of reasons. And a lot of a lot of service people have such a service mentality that they don't want to talk about their needs or their problems because they still want to be the strong soldier who, you know, does what they're told and doesn't uh, have to, like, go through or experience any cognitive dissonance about following orders. I will never know what my friend Gerald went through, but I hope that um, I can at least be willing to listen it be willing to understand something that is a complete world away from my experience and and be grateful for people who not only volunteer to protect not to harm but to protect but also to like uh, engage in a dialogue that's so much bigger than uh, just politics or petty you know surface level things but actually what does it look like for someone what are they experiencing when they hold a weapon and when they come back home and they're no longer holding these weapons or being w ready to kill so yeah that's panic room